One of my favorite movies of all time, Jurassic Park. And what I've learned from watching the original trilogy to the recent reboots is that cloning giant prehistoric reptiles and raising them all on an island for human entertainment never ends well. Nevertheless, many of us, including myself, can't help but imagine how awesome and terrifying it would be if dinosaurs still existed today. I mean, isn't there a part of us that, that really want to ride the gyrosphere and watch herds of stegosaurus go about their harmless veggie-eating life? I mean, don't we deep down all wish we can look up at the sky and find a flock of pterodactyls flying above us. You know, not at us, but, but flying past us. And yes, we all want to see, uh, from a safe distance, the fearsome and carnivorous beast that is the T-Rex in all its glory. But of course, at the moment, all of this is just wishful thinking. So far, none of us have gotten wind of any sort of announcement about the successful cloning of a dinosaur. No one is promoting the opening of a wildlife park with dinosaurs in it. But if we were speaking hypothetically, I think a lot of us can't help but ask, is real life Jurassic Park possible? And if it is, how close is modern science to making it a reality? Now let's go back a little to the 1993 film Jurassic Park. And the premise of the dinosaurs' de-extinction was founded on the hypothesis that a dinosaur's DNA sample can be extracted from the fossil of a mosquito that was trapped in amber. Of course, assuming that the mosquito incidentally consumed the blood of a dinosaur before it perished. Anyway, the hypothesis proposes that the reptile's blood cells can then be recovered and its DNA with a few modifications can be transplanted into a modern reptilian egg to grow a new dinosaur. But in reality, while it is possible to find fossils of million year old insects that are well preserved in amber, recovering intact dinosaur DNA from them and using it then to breathe life into another dinosaur is extremely unlikely. That's because DNA, while it is an impressive complex molecule composed of trillions of parts, these equally vital pieces are held together in the cell nucleus while the creature remains alive. However, once the animal's cells start to die, their DNA molecules start to break down as well. This dogma concerning cell death is supported by Nobel laureate and biochemist Tomas Lindell, who stressed that DNA from even the most intact fossilized insect or dinosaur cannot survive after tens of millions of years. And in 2012, his claim was proven by a study published in a publication named The Proceedings of the Royal Society B. The findings of this research calculated that DNA has a half-life of only 521 years, which means every link in the DNA sample would be completely obliterated after a maximum of 6.8 million years. Moreover, the genetic information is deemed unreadable just after 1.5 million years. Of course, the Jurassic period dates to around 200 million years ago, and while 6.8 million years is a long time, even perfectly preserved fossils or blood cells of these extinct reptiles would not be enough to provide the genetic information required to guide the cloning of a dinosaur as depicted in Jurassic Park. Now, what about the creation of the dinosaurs in Jurassic World? Considering that the 2015 film reboot was released 20 years after the first Jurassic Park movie, it is only natural to expect that the logic and science behind the de-extinction of dinosaurs had already been adapted to coincide with recent scientific research and discoveries. And this may lead some of us to think that the depiction of dinosaur cloning in this latest installment is more achievable than before. Now, not only did Jurassic World reacquaint us with familiar and fascinating creatures like the Velociraptor, the film also introduced us to genetically modified hybrid dinosaurs. And the non-human antagonist of the movie is what they call the Indominus Rex. Now, what makes the Indominus Rex special was that it was made from the DNA of various dinosaurs, including the Tyrannosaurus and the Velociraptor. Its genetic makeup also contains DNA traces of tree frogs and cuttlefish, which of course resulted in the mutant dinosaurs developing special abilities such as thermal adaptability and camouflage. And seeing how intelligent, fearsome, and murderous the Indominus Rex turned out to be, concerns have been raised over the likelihood of creating new dinosaurs as detailed in Jurassic World. So is the key to reintroducing 44 reptiles to the world really in genetic modification? Well, according to American paleontologist Jack Horner, the answer is yes. However, theoretically speaking, the most effective method is nothing like these movies suggest. Horner has worked as an advisor for the Jurassic Park film franchise for several years, but not only does he not think that dinosaurs
dinosaurs can be cloned from fossilized DNA of dinosaurs, he also doesn't believe you need them to begin with. For Horner, the genetic information required to create them still exist in abundance today. As for where you'll get the secret genetic code, all you need to do is look at the sky to find the answer. Because if any animal should be modified to be bred back into dinosaurs, it's birds. I know, I know, birds may not look anything like it, but these feathered winged creatures are considered to be the planet's only living dinosaurs today. They are identified as the revolutionary descendants of the two-legged dinosaurs during the Jurassic period known as the theropod. This dinosaur suborder includes the likes of the Tyrannosaurus rex, and this makes birds, like the chicken, a better source of dinosaur DNA than any dinosaur fossil found today. And as for how this can be done, Horner essentially proposes reversing evolution in some way. This entails modifying the genes in the embryo of a modern bird by selecting and reactivating all its ancient evolutionary characteristics that is similar with dinosaurs. In a nutshell, he basically want to hatch dinosaurs like chickens. However, the challenge is not only in figuring out the exact genetic instructions, but also in determining how to reactivate them. Horner is confident that his conceptualized method will be able to yield promising results in the foreseeable future. He may not be completely off the mark. Several laboratory experiments on gene modification have been somewhat successful. For example, the patented fluorescent fish called glowfish has been genetically engineered by extracting fluorescent protein from a jellyfish and inserting it into the embryo of a zebra fish. There's also a team of Harvard and Yale researchers that succeeded in retroengineering a bird's beak and turning it into a dinosaur looking snout and palate. So soon enough, modern science may make it possible for even a chicken to grow its tail and to have its wings revert back into arms and hands. However, should Horner or other scientists succeed in genetically modifying birds to make them look like dinosaurs, the public really shouldn't expect these creatures created in their labs to be as massive as the T-Rex or the Indominus Rex, at least not right away. The goal for the moment is to capture the dinosaur form. Growing these dinosaur-looking birds to be as tall as three-story buildings will be an entirely different objective that can be maybe attempted on later, or maybe not. And as for how long it would take to successfully create a transgenetic dinosaur, the answer is still quite uncertain. Some leading experts in genetics believe that dinosaurs could once again exist and thrive on Earth by 2050. Corner in particular estimates that it might take a decade to retro-engineer dino chickens, though there is no way to know for sure. Nevertheless, experts are optimistic that progress in creating transgenetic dinosaurs will not cease, especially since more and more teams from highly esteemed institutions are hoping to crack the code that will bring dinosaurs back to life, though I, I have no idea why. I mean, please, can, can we just let them stay extinct? I mean, I, I really would like to see a world where I'm not dodging T-Rexes all the time. Not saying it will get to that point, but you never know. So maybe on top of the robot apocalypse, the zombie apocalypse, maybe we should add the dinosaur apocalypse. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think. Should science, should we be spending the time and effort to, to try to bring back dinosaurs? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.